Hey everyone, welcome back to another Ruby Basics tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, I want to talk about case statements. So you've probably heard of case switch statements in different languages. Ruby has case statements. And you know, when we've gone through the tutorial, tutorial so far, we started off with getting, and obviously using, user input, doing a little bit of uh, interpolation. Um, feeding it back, responding to the user. And then we talked about the different kind of variables and the variable scope, category and scope, and the different types of variables that we could use to store that single piece of data. And then obviously we said, well, hang on, there may be more than one piece of data, or in fact, I may want the system to provide me data. And we looked at arrays. What we need to do now is look at how we respond to that data. So given that either the system has you know collections of data within it, and you know, if we exp if we went beyond arrays, we'd probably be looking at databases, that's fine. And if we have single pieces of data because we've asked a user to give us some information, then who cares what happens, right? What are we going to do about that? So case statements are a way to have various ways to respond to user input. So I'm going to try and keep this one quick because case statements are, very, are fairly simple. So what we need to do is, is just let the user know that we want some information. This uh, ID I'm using here, by the way, is called Aptana. It's free. It's an open source. I think it's open source. It's certainly free. And uh, maybe I'll put a link in the description so you can download it from uh, Aptana. Uh, I switched to this just because, as you know, I'm, I'm hacking away at a text-based game here, plus some other items that I've yep I've not pulled in to here yet. Um, and it's just a bit more integrated. It's got uh, it's got Git etc. So if you're wondering, oh, this doesn't look like SkyT. Yeah, I've, I've, I still use SkyT, but I switched to this. So let's do the classic prompt. What's your name, Mr. User or Miss User? And we will. Uh, so uh, what do we need? We need a variable, okay? So name equals get dot chomp dot downcase. Our usual uh, little format downcase, if I can spell. Okay, so we get the user data, and then what we do? We open up a case statement, and the case statement is, you know, it's the cases that we want to apply to, in this case, our variable called name. So this is uh, something to remember. This is this is where this comes from. I know that might seem obvious, but it's that that had me stuck for ages. So we're applying these different cases to a particular uh, you know object, a particular variable in this case, right? So and this is this is a bit it's a bit given when then, you know. So given we've got this variable when oop, don't like that. Do a little bit of indentation, just hit tab there, interesting. Uh, so when input is okay, mark, for example. And we don't put then, we just go, uh, you know, put, uh, uh, what, hey, um, aren't you a tester, testees, there we go, okay, aren't you a tester, right? And guess what? Yep, going to be pedantic about the input, uh, the indentation. We do, we just do another, right? So, the cases, the cases we want to apply, apply to name. And when it's Mark, put this. When it's Dave, do something else, right? So, puts, you know, ah, there came or whatever, right? And this obviously could be anything. This could be call a function, uh, carry out a series of activities, invoke an, an if statement, etc. And so, the thing with case statements, and probably uh, something that you know is already on your mind, is why not if statements? For me, case statements are about control. If statements are about evaluation. There's evaluation going on in both. But if we look, for example, at uh, you know, having a controller file that, given certain input, calls a whole bunch of methods or classes or what else do we have? Um, yeah, I always think of functions back to JavaScript, right? So we've got the classes, we've got the methods all stacked up. We would want a controller file, and a case statement is a great way to have control over the flow of a program. Whereas an if statement, ifs I feel are scattered throughout the program and they're evaluating conditions. 
and evaluating multiple conditions, etc. Right? So, okay, so we've got two whens in here, and you can have as many as you want. Usual programming caveats of don't make it all too big. But what if it's not Mark or it's not Dave? Well, again, a bit like an if statement, we have an else. And you should always end your case statements with an else. Otherwise, if someone puts in something else, it will break. Right? Because the, the case statement will run it and go, Poof, I have no idea what that is. Sorry about that. And it will bomb out. So put... Um, oh, hey, this is a very trivial example, I know. I don't know you. Okay. Okay. So that's how we end a case statement. In fact, that's how we end a case statement and that is the basics of it and you know lines between it etc all just uh, your preference now let's save that down and what I'm able to do in this IDE of course is go to my this is case example right go to case example and run it let's see if this works okay and we see down here what's your name uh, Bob right. Ooh, I don't know you and that's it and we can see over here that it's stopped running. So again, if I run it again, what's your name? So in this case, it should, when it's Mark, we should put, hey, aren't you a tester? Oh, I don't know you, that's interesting. Okay, so when Mark, how did I type that? Okay, so we've got a little defect here. So case name, when it's Mark, ah, you know I think that is? I think it's that. So let's just try that again. Uh, whoop, don't forget to save it. Okay. Interesting, because I did down case here, so that's what happened. So I got mark, I put capital M in, it's down case, down cased the text to this, so it won't evaluate. So let's try that again. If I put an uppercase, let's see if that will now works. There we go. Okay. So that's an interesting little glitch that we need to address because. There's a really good chance someone is going to type it you know, syntactically correctly, right? Now, what we can do with the case statement is say, well, there's a possibility. Ah, I don't like that. I like that. Okay, there's a possibility that someone's going to do, say, this. Right? Okay, or. You know, if it was an application, that is annoying, that indexing thing, in indenting. Maybe they're just going to do that. Or maybe they'll even just do that. Who knows? But we can put a whole bunch in here and say, well, when it's any of these, this is the answer. And let's just see if that works. That is annoying. Never mind. Okay, so let's save that down and run this again. So we've got the option to do, in fact, let's, uh, let's do that. Ta da Okay. So that's how we get around some of these. Now, more advanced stuff, you can of course just do pattern matching. We won't get onto that in here. Um, I do find, you know, uh, you know the the pattern matching, right? So you could do strings. So let's just let me just have a look here. Hang on. You know, all of the pattern matching, like uh, oop, all of this business. Um, to to Z, I can't exactly remember how we do this now. Right, uh, to Z. So you could do pattern matching in there like that, but for this simple example, we'll not do that. That for me is a case statement. There'd be, there'd be nothing stopping you, you know, putting in, um, you know, registration sheet or something. Calling a method. Do call it uh, reg. Try and spell it right. Uh, there'd be nothing stopping you then calling other bits of code, methods, uh, putting if statements in there, whatever you want. I'd probably break the program down a bit more clearly than that. And in fact, in a lot of my programs, what I have is literally just that. Given it's this, then go call a method that does all of the work. And you keep your control, your case statement, nice and clean. And of course, you can embed case statements into uh, you know, things like methods, classes, if you wish. Um, but again, try and write the simplest looking thing. Let the uh, whatever it is you're putting together, whatever object you're putting together, make it do the simplest thing so that your programs are nice and clean. So that's it. You get some input, and depending on which particular case has occurred on that input, 
in that object and again it's not always it doesn't always have to be variables uh, that you will then you know, when it's a certain value you will go away and do some stuff and always put an else statement that says if it's not that if it's not one of our expected inputs then go do something else okay so that is the case statement and for me let me reiterate case statements are about flow control if statements are about evaluation and we'll look at if statements next thanks very much